This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers where we are living in a new world of communication. As you can see by this setup, I will not have live guests for the foreseeable future because of the concerns about COVID-19 and coronavirus. The second and third segments of this show do have a uh, guest in studio because I recorded them before new restrictions were put into place. At any rate, we will work hard to provide the same kind of information and interviews you are accustomed to just in a different way. This past week, the number of coronavirus cases drastically increased as we expected because of the increase in testing. I'm talking with three members of the Houston congressional delegation about their concerns going forward, starting with Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, representing the 18th congressional district and who in her role on the Homeland Security Committee is now the chair of the congressional task force on coronavirus. Congresswoman Jackson Lee, tell me what is the immediate and short term role and mission of the task force? Well, good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with your viewers this morning. And thank you, uh, Amber L, for covering this very important topic, uh, along with uh, your station, uh, KPRC, um, it is to allow members to uh, collaborate and discuss the various issues and concerns that are occurring in their own district and to be able to support larger issues. I'm delighted with the members who have joined. It is a bipartisan caucus that includes um, a, an emergency room doctor who happens to be a congressperson uh, and uh, a member of Congress from Pennsylvania who happens to be a Republican. So what we're focusing on is the big ticket items. Uh, right now, we're securing support for $150 billion for our hospitals to expand capacity. We believe that is something that all of our members and all the members in the United States Congress and the House in particular will be very interested in as we work on this uh, third appropriations bill that has to be very large in order to meet what we think uh, is going to be a, a spike uh, if we're not able to make it a hump uh, for people who will be um, needing to be hospitalized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are standing in front of an area that I know you work with some local people there to stand up a testing area for people locally. Uh, talk about the challenges of providing more testing sites and how important that is. Even as we're getting a grip on what's going on, we need to have more of those testing sites around this community and the country. Well, interestingly, I have been on phone calls over the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, everyone that was a member of Congress was advocating and agitating for more tests. Um, this just past Monday, I announced uh, my commitment uh, and uh, my advocacy for the president invoking the Defense Production Act. Unfortunately, as of to date, um, we're still trying to uh, have that uh, activated. The president did sign an executive order. I'm very grateful for that. That included the Defense Production Act, but we needed to be activated. And what that means is that we need to get tests more tests, more tests, because we need massive testing. The only way that you can discern uh, the coronavirus and its extent in the community if we're tested. And uh, we are very grateful to the United Memorial Methodist, uh, excuse me, United Memorial Medical Center um, that uh, worked uh, with us in our office and opened its doors. We're now in our second day, 400 um, people uh, were tested yesterday, 200 today. Um, we have the largest number so far. Obviously, we're using a lab that has to catch up. We understand that to be able to provide the information. We are committed to calling both positive and negative and then providing them with the instructions on what they should be doing.